She actually stopped the video. Look, see? She stopped the video. Alert the media. Someone stole Gabby's clip. Oh, my God. Stop you. No, I swear I didn't see it. Can we go now? Can we go back? Tell Coral! By the way, I have it on good notice that the principal watches these things. So, imagine that that's her listening in. And she does. She does. She wants to make sure that I don't bore you too much, or that I bore you enough. Hey. All right, put it on. I hope you know I was still recording. That's fine. Because it's the truth. All right. So, listen. So, then when he comes back, the Continental Congress changes, molds, transforms. They're not going to be communicating anymore. They are now a war council, kind of like Indians have a war council. The Continental Congress became a war council. Notice again that its function is not to run the colonies. Its function is not to run a country. Its function is to, in essence, figure out what they needed in order to go to war. So what did they need? They needed to raise money, borrow money, figure out where that was coming from. They needed to identify generals, and then it was the general's responsibility to fight the war. So the Continental Congress' function was as a war council, and therefore having one representative from each of the colonies was okay, because in essence, the meetings must have gone this way. Okay, Rhode Island, how many men do you think that you can attribute to us in order to fight the war? Okay, and how much money do you think that you can contribute? How about you, New York? You make a lot of money. How much money? How many men? What are the tools that you can send to us? That was, in essence, the type of conversations that would have gone on. So it had nothing to do with building roadways. It had nothing to do with, you know, taxes. It had nothing to do with any of those things. And that's why it was a very simple organization. So let's fast forward this whole thing. They win the war. Once they win the war, over time, they have to convert themselves from a war council, an organization whose function is to fight and win a war, to an organization whose function is to run a country. And the two things are not related at all. There's a lot more decision making that needs to take place, a lot more thought that takes place in running the day-to-day -day affairs of a country. How do we interact between the different states? You know, where do we place highways? All of those things that you don't have to worry about when you're fighting a war, now they have to fight for. So, that went in to creating a new Congress, a Congress that was different in structure to the Congress that existed in that first Congress that was created. Okay? Now, the Congress that's existed is very interesting because it is the product, the result, the outcome of a compromise. And the word compromise means an agreement where different parties get different things, but not everything they want. Okay, that's a compromise. I'm going to get this. It's not everything that I want, but I'm satisfied. It's like a negotiation in baseball salary. I want 20 million. You're going to give me 15. We meet halfway. You're going to give me 18, and we're going to be fine. Okay? It's a compromise. Our Congress is a compromise. It's a compromise because the different colonies had different ideas as to what the function of Congress was going to be. Some colonies wanted Congress to continue to be a war council. Very similar to what the Greeks had. You may remember the story of ancient Greece. They were completely separate. The Spartans were doing their own thing. The Athenians were doing their own thing. Okay? But when they were threatened by other nations, they came together and they bound together under a war council to fight them off. And if you've seen the movie The 300, which is a really good but a little bit on the rated R side, it, it shows you how the groups came together for the purpose of beating a mutual 
a opponent, and afterwards they went back to being separate countries. Some states thought that that's what we were going to be. We we're going to be separate colonies that would come together in times of crisis. Other colonies said, look, the reality of the matter is that we need to be like a team. Teams are much better than the individual parts. Why? Because each member of the team has something to contribute. And that something to contribute adds to the overall. So let's say that we have members that have weaknesses that other members of the team have as a strength. We kind of use each other's strengths to make our, ourselves better. I'll give you an example. In the early colonies, the southern colonies were great for growing stuff. Great weather, great land, they grew a lot of stuff. The northern colonies were great and they had lots of factories. They had a lot of people who had finishing skills. They could do finished products very well. So the teamwork is really good because they didn't have that in the south. And the north didn't have the types of farms. So the south would grow, for example, a crop like cotton, ship the cotton to the north. They would then weave the cotton into thread and make clothing. So together, they were better than individually because the south wasn't making the clothing, the north wasn't growing the crop. Together, they were better as a team, and people realize that. Together, we're much better than individually because we can kind of supplement our strength and be much better. But in order to do that, they have to come with an idea of how do we create a Congress that's going to run a country that is so big. The 13 colonies today, to you, seem small. Elementary choir, please report to the conservatory. Elementary choir, please report to the conservatory. They seem small. When you look at the map, it's just one strip of land. Okay? But you have to look at that strip of land with the eyes of somebody that lived in the 18th century. We judge it because you get on a plane in Miami and you can be in New York in how many hours? Three. 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 Back then, you got on a buggy in New York and you made it to Miami maybe three or four weeks later. Okay? So that made the country seem larger. Communication was slower. So for them, governing a country that was that large required a lot of decision making, a lot more people than one per colony. So in the compromise, you heard that the North and the South had a compromise, I'm sorry, the big states and the, the small states had to compromise with regards to the number of people and so on. And that great compromise created a House of Representatives that benefited the large states. And the way that the large states, by the way, today there's 435 members in the House of Representatives. And your book tells the story kind of kooky. It basically says, look, each state received one representative every 30,000 people it had. And that was okay, because the first 13 colonies didn't have that overwhelming number of people. So it wasn't a lot of people that went to Congress. But as we got bigger and bigger and bigger, if for every 30,000 people you sent one representative, Washington, D.C. would be overwhelmed with the number of people. So ultimately, they got to 435, and they decided to stop. But the book doesn't tell you why 435 is such a magic number. Why 435 as opposed to 335 or 535? And the answer is simple. 435 seats were the maximum number of seats that they could put in the building. That was it. If they wanted more seats, they had to build a bigger building. And they said, okay, 435 seats like a good number. We're going to stay with that. And we have stayed with 435 seats, not because it's a magical number or logically because, of, because they didn't want to build a bigger building, and that was the number of seats that they could accommodate in that. So, but how does it work? How does it work? Well, Ms. Frades could probably do a really good job at explaining it. It works by proportions. 
And you were working on proportions last year. That's the one that you put the equal and a fraction on this side and a fraction on that side. Remember that? Once fraction is one, one over 100 or whatever, and you're, okay. That's, that's a proportion. And this is, okay, this is the proportion that we're trying to get. Each state has X number of people that live there. Now, that X number of people, when you add all of the people in the entire United States, you get a number. Then you want to know, Kiki, then you want to know what percentage of the total number of people in the United States live in Florida. So you have to put the total number on the bottom. You have to put the number of people that live in Florida on the top equals 1 over 100, or x over 100. Okay? When you work that out, you get a percentage. Once you have that percentage that you're familiar with getting, and by the way, these are really big numbers. I decided to do it once in the class 13 years ago, and I stopped doing it. You know why? Because the calculators didn't have enough digits on the screen for the number of people that live in the United States. But it's a simple, well, we didn't have computers at that time in the classroom. But it's a simple math formula. When you get that percentage, then you multiply that percentage times 435. That's the number of representatives that your state has. Florida currently has 27 representatives in the state of Florida. Every 10 years, Every 10 years, it, the, the number percentage moves because the percentage of people that live in Florida changes. The percentage of people that live in New York changes. What stays the same is 435. So every, every 10 years, and that's why we conduct the census, that number fluctuates up and down. Right now, we have 435 representatives. Okay? You know how it is determined the number of people in the Senate. And Ms. Vila is going to tell us. Because she doesn't want to read later, and if I talk long enough, she won't have to read today. How do we determine the number of representatives in the Senate of the United States? Okay. Jeopardy music, someone? Thank you very much, Kike. That was a very good rendition of Jeopardy. Okay, can somebody tell me how do we de determine the number of uh, representatives in the Senate? Yes, Gab. Yeah. Proportion? Nope, that's in the House of Representatives. Yes. The number of states times two. No. The number of states times two. I guess that that would be a good way of doing it. Basically, what it is, you're, you're right. Every state has two senators. Is that what you're going to say? No. What were you going to say? Eight. Well, never mind. You have six, two senators. So okay, two senators per state. As we got bigger, we got more senators, but right now we're at 100 senators because we have 50 How states. Many senators, senators does Miami, have? Miami doesn't have any senators. <laughs> it's per state. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to tell you the number of senators that Rhode Island has, and you tell me the number of senators that Florida has. Shh. Kiki, for your 100, if you brought it signed, a Rhode Island has two senators. How many senators does Florida have? Two. Are you Thank you, Kiki! Oh, okay. <laughs> I raised my hand and she said it. Hey, I know, but I was talking to you. Oh, Gabby, too. <laughs> I know, but I didn't say Gabby should get minus 100 points. Kiki yeah. is a very good listener. Okay. Yeah, she should, what she should, should get you. Okay, shh. She shouldn't get her 10 okay. points. Okay, shh. You should work okay. on this Okay, each state, each state, Kiki has two senators. Okay? Plus the number of proportional representatives. So Florida has 27, 27 representatives and two senators. Okay? That's what Florida has. Now, having said that, there is another kind of very interesting thing that takes place, and we're going to find that out when we start reading. The people who can be senators are older in age than the people that can be representatives. The people that can be senators actually go to work for six years. Six, War? six. You get elected and you are in office for six years. Word. The number, oh. the people, shh, listen, the people who are representatives, only two years. 
So the question then that we must have is, why such a difference? Well, think about this. The, the members of the House, 